Hey Crossing students, it's Meg. Uh, I really wish I could be there with you today. Trust me, I really wish I could be there. Uh, but since I can't, I'm coming to you guys via the technology that is available to us as humans. Uh, again, I really miss you guys. I hope that you guys are really excited for Thanksgiving and um, what that holiday is going to look like. Um, I hope that you guys are staying safe and that you guys are staying healthy. So we're wrapping up our current sermon series called It's Personal Today. And I want to start today off with a question. How did you meet your best friend? So I love asking this question because it's usually answered one of two ways. It's either like an oddly specific story or a I don't really remember type thing. So I had this friend in high school, still do, her name's Asho. Except for her name isn't Asho, it's Ashley, but I have been super close with her since ninth grade. And she calls me Mego and I call her Asho and we don't call each other anything else. It's weird if I call her anything else. Um, I met Asho for the first time in elementary school. She was really shy and really quiet and reserved. Uh, we sat at the same table in fourth grade and a boy named Lane Haddix that also sat at our table gave her a, a Spider-Man Valentine's Day card that said, just, I love you. And she responded by crying. Like she was very soft-spoken, like very to herself, didn't really know what to do. So at Union, you're in uh, these smaller elementary schools until you get into sixth grade. And then you go uh, from the fifth grade class where you have like 100 kids per grade and then all of them get dumped into the sixth and seventh grade center. And so I went from having 100 kids in my class to like 1400 kids in my class. It is hectic. Okay, so Asho and I didn't have any classes together during those two years in sixth and seventh grade and we kind of drifted, but then we were reunited by mutual friends in eighth grade and it was quite a reunion and I barely recognized her. She was outgoing and funny and loved to crack a good joke. Uh, she was an absolute beast on the soccer field, still is. It's amazing. She was crazy cool, and by cool, of course, I mean totally weird, but her weird matched why we, my weird, and here we are today. Uh, here's a picture of us side by side, us in high school, us now. She just got married, so that's fun. Uh, but yeah, I got to be the maid of honor in her wedding. Thank God for glow ups, right? So maybe you've had an experience like this where someone flips a 180. Maybe you've had a friend who used to be a Drake kind of guy, and now he's Luke Bryan's number one fan. Or you know a girl who used to be super goofy in elementary school, and now she's like quiet and keeps to herself. Or maybe you know someone who went from being a jerk to like a kind person, or the opposite, vice versa. Maybe you yourself would admit that you're a drastically different person than you were a couple of years ago. Thank God that I've changed in the last eight years because look at me in high school. Here's a picture. It's bad. Like, thank God for change, right? Okay. So on one hand, it's cool that people can become totally different people over time. On the other hand, it can be kind of strange, right? No matter how you feel about it, this will always be true people change. It's true. People change, and we all believe this, except for when we don't. So here's what I mean. When it comes to people's bad qualities and traits, we rarely believe that they're going to change, right? It seems impossible. We think things like, my coach is a jerk, he always has been a jerk, and he always will be a jerk, right? We think my sister always will be a mess. She loses things, she forgets things, she's always gonna be a general disaster. Or my dad will never not have a bad temper. Or that guy in my school will never not be a bully. Or that girl will never not be into drugs, right? We think these things about people and when it comes to the things about other people that we don't really like, we don't believe that they can become different people. But if we're all being honest, we kind of feel the same way about ourselves, too. So ask yourself this question. Maybe you close your eyes and just like think about it for a second. Do you have something that you wish you could change about yourself, but you don't feel like you can? No, I'm not talking about your height or your eye color. I'm talking about things like this. 
Maybe it's an addiction or a bad habit that you just cannot get rid of. It's something you know, or at least like a thing that you should stop, uh, but you feel like you can't get rid of it. Like you could never stop. Maybe you've tried to stop before and it just has not worked. Maybe you did good on it for a while, but then you found yourself back in the same old place and you think, forget it. What's the point of even trying? Maybe it's a situational thing. You have people that really, really frustrate you. And eventually you just find yourself blowing up with anger and losing your temper. And you wish that you didn't struggle so much with anger, but you do. It's there. You wish you didn't say the stuff that you say whenever you're angry. Or maybe there's someone that you're extremely jealous of and you wish that you felt differently, but you don't. And you don't feel like it's ever going to change and you don't know how to make it different. Or maybe it's a label. Maybe there's something that you've done, a mistake that you carry with you. If you feel like people see you a certain way and there's no way that you can change that, that's a really defeating feeling, right? Maybe you feel like you're in a category and people are always going to look at you and consider you as blank. You fill in the blank with the label that you feel like you have. I mean, if we had a magic button that allowed us to change something about ourselves, we would all do something differently, right? We would all purchase that button. Unfortunately, no such button exists. I've checked Amazon. If you find it somewhere else, let me know. But sometimes we just feel powerless when there are certain things about ourselves that just don't seem to change. So not to pour on more bad news, but here's what makes this even worse. There are already so many things in our lives that it just feels like we can't change and don't have control over. We can't make them different. So you can't choose who your parents are or where you live. You don't control how much money your family makes or what assignments your teachers give you. You can't change your age. So when you have a whole bunch of other things that you can't control, it's hard to feel like you can control the things that you struggle with. If you're anything like me, after a while, you're just tempted to give up, to just throw in the towel, call it a day, move on. We all do it. And there's a quick and easy way to know if you've given up. You don't even have to think about it. Just take a second. Ask yourself if you have said these things about yourself or about a situation. It is what it is, or that's just who I am. Maybe you say it differently, but the idea is the same. It is who it is, and I am who I am, and nothing can really change. And that leads us right back to So for the last month or so, we've been talking about a guy named Zacchaeus. He was a bad guy with a bad reputation, and despite all that Zacchaeus had done, Jesus shocked the crowd and went to Zacchaeus' house. So this comes from Luke 19.7. It says, all the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. So think of a huge celebrity, like the most famous and awesome one that you can think of, all right? Immediately, my brain goes to Taylor Swift. I just feel like she's a mega celebrity who everyone knows who she is. Okay, so imagine Taylor Swift comes into your school, right? And picks out the bully at your school and says, let's go hang out. I'm going to spend time with you. I'm going to mentor you. It's going to be great. You'd be like, what? No, 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 no. How is that possible? That That's the kind of thing that's happening here in this situation. They're like, why in the world would Jesus go hang out with that guy? That's the guy who has been cheating us out of money. He sucks, right? That's what they're thinking. Of course they muttered, right? It was crazy. Now imagine being Zacchaeus. You're a tax collector. You cheat your own people out of their money. Nobody likes you. And I mean nobody. Like nobody likes you. And there's a man that some people call the Messiah, right? The one who has come to save us all. That's what the Messiah means. Some people call him the great teacher. Uh, he is legit famous. A massive crowd follows him wherever he goes. And these people have gathered just to get a glimpse of him and he looks up and chooses you. He doesn't yell at you. He doesn't tell you all the ways that you have to change. He already knows who you are, but more than that, he sees who you could be. It would be jolting, right? And it was, because look at how Zacchaeus responded. It says, but Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. 
So it's really awesome that Zacchaeus took this step to repay people. It really truly is. But this outward step that he took was really a reflection of what was going on inside of him in his heart. Something happened to Zacchaeus in the moment that Jesus spoke to him. That's when it became personal, right? Jesus saw who Zacchaeus could be and helped him see a future for himself. When someone believes that you can be different than you are right now, it changes things. When someone sees your potential and not just your mistakes and helps you to believe that change is possible, it's like the Holy Spirit comes and transform you for the inside out. And that's what Jesus did for Zacchaeus. Now here's the thing. Jesus sees potential in you too. Think about it. Jesus was God. Still is. He walked the earth and he gave people a picture of what God was like. Jesus showed us in this interaction with Zacchaeus that we don't have to change in order to be okay with God. No matter what we struggle with, who sees who we can become, and he also loves us just as we are. So here's our bottom line for the week. It's personal because Jesus knows your potential. So look at what happens next. This is in verses 9 and 10. It says, Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. So I really love that line. Today salvation has come to this house. That day radical change came to the life of of Zacchaeus because Jesus walked right up to him and treated him like he had the potential to be something different from what he had always been. And that's what Jesus does. He pursues people. He offers his help and his strength so that they can change. And because of Jesus, anyone can radically change. That's just the truth. So in the areas of life that you and I want to be different, we can start by looking to Jesus. Years and years after Jesus walked the earth, the Apostle Paul put it this way. This is from 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. Now that verse has a really special meaning for me growing up going to New Life Ranch, because that's their theme verse, and then working there. It's true, though. If you're in Jesus Christ, you're a new creation. You have that opportunity to change. You're not stuck in where you are. That's what Jesus offers to us. A new creation is found in Christ. In other words, change happens through the work of Jesus. We can try to muster up all of our own strength and try to make ourselves different, but why rely on our own strength when we have the strength of Jesus on our side? Why not partner with Jesus to make changes? He sees potential in us, and he's way more powerful than us. Zacchaeus didn't wake up one day and just decide to change. He encountered Jesus, and it became personal when he realized that Jesus saw potential in him. Jesus saw that he could be different than he had always been, and then he was. So what does this mean for us? I think it means that we need to do two different things. Number one, believe that we can change. It's a scientific fact that if you believe that you can change, your chances chances of actually changing get way better. So start there. Believe that it's possible, not on your own strength, but because of Jesus, you can change. You can stop that habit. You can control your anger. You can fix that relationship. Whatever it is for you that you might have thought didn't have the potential to change does. It absolutely does have the potential to change. Take that one step, the first step towards making that change. It might be talking to someone who can help you or praying about it or setting an alarm on your phone to remind you that you can change. It might be as simple as that. I just want you to take that step this week. It's a small step, but it can feel really, really big. Number two, I want you to believe that others can change. If we believe this about ourselves, that we are capable of change, then the next step is shifting our thinking to believing that other people are capable of making changes in their life too. The people around Zacchaeus muttered, most likely because they had never imagined a Zacchaeus that was different. They had no idea that it was possible. So ask yourself this question, who is someone that I just cannot imagine changing for the better? Then just allow your mind to consider the possibility that Jesus can radically change anyone. 
and I want you to do one thing for them this week. Maybe it's helping them with homework or texting them to cheer them on or finding time to just invest in a relationship that's broken. Maybe it's making sure to pray for them regularly. Do one thing for them even if it's it's really easy to go through life just assuming that you can't change and neither can anyone else. But that just simply isn't true. Zacchaeus became a different person because Jesus treated him differently. He changed into someone that the people around him could hardly recognize. And that's just as possible for you and every single human that you know, I promise. Just know this. Making a change is much more likely whenever you have a group of people that are surrounding you and supporting you and that you don't have to do it alone. Don't walk through your journey by yourself. Consider sharing what it would be like to change with your small group or with your most trusted friends. Or if you don't feel comfortable opening up in a group, talk to a trusted adult, a small group leader. You can always text or call me. You can always reach out to me. Talk to someone. Just let them know what's been going on. Jesus sees potential in you, even if you don't see it in yourself, I promise. So your leader and maybe some of your friends, maybe you just need to talk to them because they see that potential in you, I promise. I see that potential in you. That's why we meet in groups each week, because I want you to have people who are close to you, who know you personally to see where you are now, where you've been in the past, and where you're going in the future. I want that for you guys. I want you guys to have that community. I'm going to pray for us really quick. Jesus, um, God, we just admit that we need you to change us. We need your love. We need your grace. We need your patience. Uh, God, we need your Holy Spirit. So Jesus, I just ask that uh, you would take what, what little we have to offer and that you would turn it into something really beautiful. God, that we would we would not stray from what it is that, that you see in us uh, and, and believe that it's not there. But God, we would take you at your word when you say that you see goodness in us and you are determined to bring it out into the light. Jesus, we love you. We thank you so dearly for who you are. Amen. Again, I mean it when I say that I wish I could be there. Um, have a fantastic Thanksgiving. I hope that it is full of health, uh, and I hope that it is full of great food and time with your families and safety. Um, I really do miss you guys, and I can't wait to see you guys again very soon.